As we all know, logarithms in their first form were developed by the Scottish mathematician John Napier in 1614. In collaboration with the English mathematician Henry Briggs in 1617, they were given the form and application that we know today. The logarithm is what we call a function. This means a rule that assigns certain elements of a set to certain other elements on another set. In this case, we are talking about sets of numbers. Its greatest utility is the following, to simplify multiplication and division. In effect, logarithms convert multiplication to addition and division to subtraction. I refer in particular to the following properties. Log of a times b equals log of a plus log of b. Log of a divided by b equals log of a minus log of b. You will find many videos demonstrating these properties. By definition, log of 1 equals 0. For this video, I am going to use the base 10 logarithm. This means log of 10 equals 1, log of 100 equals 2, log of 1000 equals 3, etc. Of course, in other videos, you can find the explanation for other bases. Logarithm tables and many others were very common in all technical books. I made my own table of logarithms to four decimal places for the numbers from 1 to 10 with step 0 0.01. Suppose we don't know what 2 times 3 is, but we have a table of logarithms and we remember the property for multiplication. This way, log of 2 times 3 equals log of 2 plus log of 3. This equals 0 0.3010 plus 0 0.4771. This adds to 0 0.7781. I used only four decimals. Using the table, we look for the number that approximately has this result as a logarithm. And that is the result, 6. In principle, with a table of logarithms and knowledge of these properties, these and other operations that we are not going to talk about on this occasion can be carried out. Despite their usefulness, tables can become very cumbersome to use. Therefore, sooner than later, this means contemporaneous with Napier's development in the 1600s, this was taken as the basis for doing quick approximate calculations with a graphical version of the table of logarithms the slide rule, like this. Before electronic pocket calculators, slide rules were everywhere. Even today, they are used in certain cases in aviation and as a backup to calculate in disaster situations. What I propose today is to see how they are developed. Let's start by drawing on the x-axis all the integer numbers from 1 to 10. Now we are going to use the table of logarithms and we are going to construct the graph of this function. 1 corresponds to 0, 10 by definition corresponds to 1, 1 corresponds to 0 0.301 with few decimal places, and the other intermediate values. We can also indicate the complete function that is defined for all intermediate points. Instead of writing the actual numbers, we can put logarithm off, leaving the indication in parentheses. With the properties we have seen, let's try multiplication. For example, 2 times 3. We take the logarithm of 2. We take the logarithm of 3. The sum of the two ends at the logarithm of the answer, which is 6. Now let's do a division. 8 divided by 2. We take the logarithm of 8. We take the logarithm of 2, and since we're going to subtract, I'm going to flip this arrow. We take its origin to the tip of the 8. This indicates the logarithm of the result, which is 4. Let's remember the graph we just made. To each integer number from 1 to 10, we gave its value in logarithm. To simplify, on the y-axis, we clarify in parentheses what number that place corresponds to as a logarithm. If we increase the values to consider, 
we will have to indicate more points. With so many points, this notation still becomes complicated. So knowing what they represent, we remove the parentheses. It is now clear that we are only interested in the properties of the vertical axis. We can refine this scale by adding more subdivisions. To add or subtract distances, we make a copy of our scale and allow one to slide. Oh, that's where the name comes from. With this, we can easily operate with numbers between 1 and 10. For greater ease in some cases, covering the same distance of course, we may indicate the logarithms of numbers from 1 to 100 and operate in the same way. If a number does not fit this scale we are using, uh, one can mentally move the decimal separator so that it does fit and remember to compensate for this later in the result. This is a slide rule model that I made. Below we have the scale from 1 to 10. Above covering the same length from 1 to 100. The middle section can slide and with it we can do the operations. Let's do multiplication with the scale below the one that goes from 1 to 10. For example, 2.5 times 3.2. We look for 2.5 at the bottom and we match it with the one on the moving scale. We move on until 3.2. Immediately below in the original fixed scale, we have the result, 8. This operation can also be done with the scale above, but in some cases precision is lost. Let's try multiplication with the scale above, the one that goes from 1 to 100. For example, 35 times 1.2. We look for 35 in the upper part and we match it with the one of its scale that moves. We move around until 1.2. Immediately above, in the original fixed scale, we have the result, 42. Let's do division with the scale below, the one that goes from 1 to 10. For example, 355 divided by 113. This operation cannot be done on this scale, but one can mentally move the two decimal separators two places to the left and we have 3.55 divided by 1.13. This version gives the same result and it can be done on this scale. Now we can do this operation. We look for 3.55 at the bottom and match it to 1.13 on its moving scale. We move around until 1. Immediately below, on the original fixed scale, we have the result, which is roughly a very famous number, pi. This fraction was sometimes used as a reasonable rational approximation of pi. Bonus track. A virtuous side effect of having drawn both scales with the same length is that, all things being still, the numbers on the top scale are the squares of the numbers on the bottom. That is, 2 squared equals 4, 3 squared equals 9, and so on for all numbers and their intermediates. Reading from top to bottom, we can also say that we have calculated the square roots. Square root of 100 equals 10, square root of 81 equals 9, and so on for all numbers and their intermediates. Of course, there are many more properties of slide rules that you can find in the links in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.